Morning, everybody. Welcome to Stand Together. Jump on, say hi. Hi, good morning. If you're watching this in the replay, give us a hashtag replay. Say hi in the comments if you're watching the replay. If you're watching this live, then jump on and say good morning. Welcome to Stand Together. Hello, are you there? I bought that for my children. How old school is this? Remember this? Wow. Some of you have no idea what that is. Kids love playing with it. Hey, good morning. Welcome. Jump on. Say good morning. How are you? Welcome to Stand Together. Welcome to Monday Morning Stand Together. We've got a huge business lesson coming up today uh, for those that are starting businesses, those who are in business, those looking to buy businesses. So jump on and say good morning. Welcome to Stand Together. Who's on today? Jen, good to see you. Nick, good to see you. Pastor, good to see you. Mel, good to see you. Sarah, good to see you. Yasmina, Mandy, Chris, Mari, Chris. Kez, who else is on? So many people on. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, Mia, good to see ya. Pina, good to see ya. Pete, good to see ya. Good morning, jump on. Welcome to Stand Together. Di, good morning. Welcome to Stand Together. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition, another day, another focus for all of us here while we're standing together. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because... I'm doing this to help everybody stand together now, be here, learn something, do some Q&A, and just be around other people that are trying to really make this happen. So for those of you that are joining us live, uh, I've been loving watching this. Those that are joining us, uh, watching the replays and all of your amazing comments uh, from right around the world, it's been amazing to see you as well. So listen, today uh, in Stand Together, I want to give, give you a, a lesson that, that I learned, which really helped me in working out a business that I'm looking to buy, where that business is at, or invest into. So I do a few different types of investments. I might go and buy a majority share into a business, uh, or I might go and buy a very, very minor, small, small stake into a business, like what I call micro-investing, right? Um, and that could be very small, you know, um, a couple of bucks, all the way up to... Um, uh, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars or whatever, investing, right? Or you can be looking at buying, potentially buying a company, right? You could be potentially looking at buying something out completely um, or even in your business as well. So I thought this lesson would be really important to understand and identify where you're at, right? Because there's different life stages of a business, right? There's different life stages. Now, I talk about this thing called one, two, and three, which is about where your business is at in relation to, to you because you're trying to build uh, your your empire. And if you're a one in everything, it doesn't work. Now, if you don't know what that lesson is, go back somewhere towards the start of these lessons. Uh, and I spoke about it, but today I want to speak about the life stages of a business because it's something that I find really incredibly important in my business world. Like if I'm looking to buy something, if I know what stage that business is at, then it enables me to know whether it's going to be a good deal or not that I want to get in more necessarily, whether it's going to be a good deal just based on that one thing, but it's going to tell me whether I want to progress with the conversation more, what I could do to it, what's going to be the next stage for it. Now, if you have a business then, or multiple businesses, you want to ask yourself, from what I share with you today, what stage would you say you're at in that business? Now, this applies to everybody, right? Because you might be looking to start a business. You might be saying, okay, I've, I'm, I'm looking at maybe starting something. I've got some ideas. Well, that's actually the first stage, right? In the life stages of business, if I kind of start from here and I go up, the very first stage is the idea stage. So if you're in the idea stage, it, it means that you've got things written down, you've got notebooks, you've got ideas, things to sc scribble down, uh, and you think about starting something. So you could be that, you could be in that stage, uh, uh, number one, business stage one, which is which is the, the idea stage. The second stage is called the launch stage. Now the launch stage is when you've actually launched the business, right? So it's not an idea anymore, it's actually launched, it's out there. So if I was looking to buy a business, now sometimes people come to me and they pitch to me and they say, Aaron, here's a great business idea. Um, we want you to get involved. And now if they've got ideas on a piece of paper and a PowerPoint with no sales, no revenue, uh, no investment, no capital so far, that's I'm investing in a seed business. That's an idea stage, right? It's really early on. Or they could be a they could have already launched. So sort of the stage number two after idea stage would be a launch stage. So this could be for you if you're looking to start a business, or this could be somebody else's business that you're involved in that you want to, you want to be able to be involved in as an investor. So the second stage is your launch stage. 
Your third stage then becomes your sprint stage. Now, your sprint stage is where you're running a million miles an hour. I mean, like you are, you are, you know, you're doing everything you can to try and make it stick. You're, you're, you're trying uh, every piece of marketing you can try. You're trying all the different tactics, all the different things you can do. You're running, you're sprinting a million miles an hour. That's the third stage. We've got idea, then we've got launch, then we've got sprint. And that really what happens in a business a lot is that after you've finished the launch stage, it's about running a million miles an hour. Come on, let's make this thing work. The third stage is what I call the steady stage. Now, the steady stage, well, the fourth stage, rather. The fourth stage is what I call the steady stage. So, so idea, then you've got launch, then you've got sprint, and then you've got, then you've got steady. Now, steady stage is where you've been trying a bunch of different things, but you've found things that actually work. You start to find some things. You go, okay, 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 okay. Facebook marketing's working. Yep, got that. All right, I'm um, selling to somebody via phone is working. Okay, I like that. Um, all right, um, <clears throat> this price point is really working. Okay, really, that's working. I like that. So you start to find things that are working and the steady stage. And the other indicator I know that you're in a steady stage is you're at break even. Now, break even means that whatever you, whatever money you're spending on that business is how much you're, you're, you're bringing back in revenue, right? So you're kind of breaking even, which means it's not really costing you to run the business anymore. In an idea stage and a launch stage and a, and a sprint stage, it's generally costing you money to run the business because you haven't yet you haven't yet made any revenue straight away. That's the traditional way of, of looking at doing this. Now, I teach other ways that make revenue from from day zero of a business. I show you how to do that. That's something that I'm, I'm, I don't have time to show you today. But but it depends. If you look at traditionally, this is about traditionally. There are ways to make money from a business from day one, uh, which I teach a lot of this at, um, when I do Empire Mastery. But this is about stage one is idea stage. Right? Idea stage, we'll start from here. Idea stage, launch launch stage, sprint stage, and that, that fourth stage is the steady stage. So if you're in the steady stage, as I mentioned, you've found what's working and you break it even, right? You found what's working, you break it even. The fifth stage is what I call the growth stage, right? Now, the growth stage is the stage of business where your your business is growing, your, your sales are going up, and uh, you're making money, right? So you're above break even because your steady stage is your break even, but you're, you, you kind of look at like a bell curve. You kind of like going like this, right? You kind of go on idea, launch, sprint, steady, growth, right? That's where you're at, right? Growth is where you're making more money than what you're than what you're spending, right? And the business is growing. That's the 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 growth stage, the fifth stage. Now, after the growth stage, when you're in this growth mode, everything's about building, you're reinvesting into the business, you're reinvesting into yourself, you're reinvesting into your staff, you're making money, you're spending it, you're making money, you're spending it, right? I know someone who's in the growth stage, when they're making money in their business, or they're above break even, and they just keep reinvesting into their business because they want their business to grow. Now, if I look back on my journey, um, I... I had many times where, uh, many, many, many times where I had businesses that were worth a huge amount of money and I was still putting that money back into the business consistently because I wanted to keep growing. I mean, I remember times where, uh, where I, I suppose kind of like what Elon Musk, I didn't actually know this story at the time, uh, but when Elon Musk sold, you know, out of PayPal and he's putting more money into businesses and he had to put more money into Tesla when he was launching it and he had to borrow money from his parents to pay his rent. Now, by the way, he sold out of Tesla for a hundred, hundred million dollars, right? And he still had to borrow money from his family to pay his rent because he was in growth mode. He was investing, investing, investing right now. And um, that was a growth mode, right? So the fifth stage growth mode. So we've got, we've got idea, we've got idea, launch, sprint, steady growth. Now growth is where you are above break even and you are growing and you're, and you're investing heavily back into your business all of the time. Now you can have all the growth stage can be any stage. You can have a business that's worth a billion dollars and being growth stage and a business that's worth almost two parts of fuck all and it's in growth stage. So, uh, it, it just depends on how you're treating the business and whether you're actually breaking even. Uh, and if you're not breaking even, but you're trying a million things, you'll be in sprint stage. If you are breaking even, uh, and things are starting to work, you're probably in steady stage. But then 
after that becomes growth stage. Because a lot of people find, they go, I'm not making any money, sprint, 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 not going to be make. oh, finally I made money. Okay, I'm in the steady stage now. And then they don't go for growth. They kind of just kind of hold on because they're, they're scared about what might happen next. And they don't really, and so they only make a little bit of money every month. They make a little bit of money. They're actually not making more and more and more money because they're not reinvesting to go back into growth mode, right? Growth stage. Growth stage is number five. Now, this is the bell curve, remember? So idea, launch, sprint, steady growth. Now, as you pass growth, right, here's what could happen in businesses. This is up the top here, you kind of your bell curve. Here's what can happen in businesses. They can hit what I call stale, right? Stage number six is stale. So you go from growth into stale. Now, what is stale? No new business coming in. You're living off existing business coming in. You're not really doing much marketing. You're not really reinvesting into the business and you're just kind of holding on to your success, right? Stale stage is where I meet people and they're holding on to their success and they're shit scared about doing anything because they think if they touch anything, it's going to be a tripwire and the whole thing's going to fall down, which is the one of the biggest base fears that most entrepreneurs have, that everything's going to stop and fall down. It's one of the deepest fears an entrepreneur has, which of course, if things do go wrong, they don't happen like that. They happen over a period of time. So the, when you hit this stale stage, it means that, that there's no new business coming in, uh, but you're still making some money. This is a really common stage for businesses that have taken their foot off the gas. They've slowed down. They could be making $50 million every year. They could be making $5 million every year. They could be making $100,000 every year, but they're just, they're just stale. They're just not really doing much. I think businesses are, oh, Aaron, we're lucky. We're, an, we're, a, we're a referral-based business. You know, we're lucky. We're, you know, we, we, we survive on people refer. I'm like, okay, great. So you're effectively a dying business. Because if you're living off the scraps of the people that want to be able to refer business to you effectively, what you do is you have a dying business. Because if people are not going to start referring to you, or if those referees start to dry up, then what? You've got no presence, right? You've got no branding, you've got no marketing, you've got no you know websites and social media engagement, you've got no following, you've got no audience, you've got no funnels, you've got you've got there's there's a whole process that goes behind creating a successful business. And stale is where you've kind of grown, and this is how it works. This is where it happens, and I see it all the time. People go through growth, they're making money, they're spending money, making money, spending, 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 making, making, spending, spending, making, and they go, fuck, I'm so sick of this this thing. I've got this business, I'm not making any money, that's it, it's not. And they forget that they are so close to this point where they start to make a big chunk of money, right? And they start to hit uh, a real... Uh, a real what I call a pile, right? Not a patch of money, but a pile of money, right? And and they start to pull back. And they go into stale mode. And stale mode is where you're making a little bit of money, you're making a little bit of money, right? Right? But you're not really reinvesting. You get gun shy. You start to kind of go, oh, maybe I want to start spending money on this and I don't really want to. Now, I see people all the time like they're putting money into their business to grow it and then all of a sudden they're going to be spending more money on, I don't want to go on a holiday now. Oh, you know what? Normally you spend 20 grand on marketing in a year, but I want to save that because I want to to, to go on a holiday instead. Right? And they start to slow down in the growth of their business and they hit this stale mode. Now, the challenge for this stale mode is, imagine it's the top of this bell curve, right? So your bell curve goes like this. Growth is at the very, there are very, um, almost at the apex of it, right? Almost at the apex of it. But then the very top is this stale mode. Now, what's the challenge when you sit in a stale mode for too long without reinvesting, without growing, without finding ways to improve, without finding ways to get, not even just to, to, to um, I'm not just talking about marketing. What about innovation? Everything's stale. In stale mode, everything is stale. There's no innovation. There's no, hey, what about if we deliver it this way? And what if we do? Think about how many businesses you can think that are stale. I'll name you some big ones. Telstra. Um, Maya. There's so many. There's so many businesses out there that are in stale mode. And what is on the other side of stale mode? What do you think? The next stage, stage seven. Okay, stage up here, stage six is stale. Stage seven on the other side is life support. Life support is when your business starts to decline 
and it is going downhill. You know, you need to inject something into it, and you start to see this on life support because you've gone from being just kind of cruising to oh shit, I lost a customer. Oh no, there's been a new innovation. Yellow cabs in Australia. If you're watching from Australia or if you're watching from Melbourne, because there are different cabs everywhere. Cabs in general. We're here. We're fucking here. Then what happened, right? Right? Then what happened? Then they stopped innovating. They stopped growing. And so they went, life support. Guess, guess what happened? What happened was that Uber came along because Uber were in growth mode of investment and of technology. And so Uber came along and they pushed them into life support. But they were already there because they were staying in stale for too long. They weren't innovating, they weren't great. Listen to me. How could yellow cabs have ever gone mostly under, right? Mostly under when we've got Uber that was created five years ago in America before it even made any other countries around the world? How'd that happen? Right? They stayed in stale for so long. They didn't spend money on innovation. They didn't spend money on growth, right? All they did is they stale, stayed in this, in this stale for so long. That's all they did. That's all they did. They stayed stale for so long. And so what happened? They went to life support. Life support, business declining, and they needed to inject something into it. They didn't. And then what happens after your business starts declining? What's on the other side of this? Death. The final stage of a life stage of a business is death. Number eight, death. Businesses goes under, right? The business goes under, the death of the business. And this is what happens when you're in life support. You're struggling to survive. You're struggling to survive. And you're in death, right? That's the next step, the eighth step. Idea, launch, sprint, steady, growth, right? Stale, life support death. So what's the lessons from today? Number one, know where your business is. Number two, you probably guessed it. The most important stage that you can stay at is, is the growth stage. It's the growth stage. It's the most important thing that you can stay at is the growth stage. The growth stage is where you are reinvesting into your business. And I don't just mean money. I mean time. I mean energy. I mean innovation. I mean getting better staff training. I mean setting better standards. I mean working on your culture. I mean getting better marketing. I mean looking at your packaging if you have a product. I mean upskilling your team on a service. I mean going out there and rebuilding your websites. I mean looking at your uniform. You know, if you've got a shop, redoing the shop front, redoing your website. Growth is about constant improvement, constant improvement, right? That's what it's about. Now, here's the thing. It's really challenging when you're in life support, right? Almost a death to try and pull it back into growth mode. It's challenging. It's doable. I do it all the time with students that I come to me and they're in life support. I'm like, for fuck's sake, why don't you come to me earlier than when you're in life support or death? But you can pull it back, right? You can pull it back. It's just challenging. It's just challenging. But what we have to understand is this. When you have an idea, great. You're going to launch it. Once you launch it, sprint. Do whatever you can to make the thing work. Go, 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 go. Right, whatever you can. You know, whatever the direction you're thinking, just keep going within your own moral and ethical framework plus the goals of the business. Stay in that, that trajectory, that growth. Then you're going to get the steady. Okay, things are working. We're kind of getting there. We're breaking even. Then you've got to keep going. You keep investing. You've got to start growing. You start growing. You're going, okay, we're making money. We're innovating. We're feeling good. We're running and we're enjoying this. We're growing. The problem now happens. Where people go into stale mode is when they stop innovating, they stop investing, they stop expecting more from themselves. That's when they go into the stale mode. And when you're in stale mode, it's a slippery slope at the top to start falling into life support. And when you fall into life support, you're going, oh shit, oh shit, like what the yellow cab, as soon as Uber hit over here, they must have gone, shit, what are we going to do? Oh my gosh, quick, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Oh shit, what are we going to do now? Uber's come out, massive platform, huge info, um, huge software behind it, huge amount of revenue behind it. But no, 
What did they do? They went, crap, what are we going to do? And ever since then, for like almost 10 years now, Ever since then, they've been in this this flux of trying, literally like they're drowning, they're trying to keep their head above water, so, trying to survive, and <clears throat> they've done a very poor job ever since. And you know what? <clears throat> you can rescue a business from life support. You absolutely can. But it's so much easier to stay in growth mode. And growth <clears throat> stage of a business, <clears throat> the growth stage of a business is a mindset as well as an action. You just can't say, I'm in a growth mindset, right? That's important. You've got to be focusing on investing into your business and you've got to be focusing on innovating in your business. They're the two things that keep you in growth mode, investment and innovation. Does that make sense? So work out where you are right now in your business and do everything in your power to make sure you're staying inside that growth mode. That's, that's, that's the gold nugget, staying inside of growth mode, everything you can to stay inside of growth mode. And why is this also relevant if you're looking to buy a business? For me, I'm always looking at, if I look to buy a business, where I want to buy that business. Now, do you want to know from me one of my favorite positions to buy a business? Now, of course, if I invest into the idea stage and the launch stage, it could be less money. But also one of my favorite businesses to buy, you might actually think is the growth business. That's fun. I like buying that. One of my other, one of my favorite businesses to buy, though, is actually a stale business. Because you think about it. If yellow cabs was for sale and I saw what was happening with Uber in, in the States and I saw what was happening there and I could buy that business, right, that was stale. Let's say I could buy that a year before Uber had hit. I had the investment capital behind me. I could have gone out there and created the same app as what Uber has done. We were already all using the cabs. We already had to rely on all these cabs around Australia. If they made an amazing app that everyone loved, number one, Number two, they fixed their shitty customer service. Innovated that, right? Built on that, right? Number three, rebranded. Rebranded, better training, and an app. I guarantee you Uber would have had a really rough time trying to break into Australia if they fixed their customer service, built an app that was was just as good as Uber's because they already had a captive market. Here's the, the most excruciating, painful thing about the cabs as an example. Here's the most excruciating, painful thing. We all had to use them because there was no other option. They had a captive market. You see, when you launch a business and you want to sell something, you go, okay, I want to sell something brand new. Here's my brand new trinket or my brand new service. You've got to get customers on board and then convince them that it's a good product and service. Uber already had a, 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 a taxi, the cabs already had us. We were all using it. We had to use it. But that was a stale business. So if I bought that business, did better marketing and branding, rebranded the thing, right? I think it needed an overhaul of like, fuck, we're sorry, had bad, had bad service, we're going to get better. Second is relaunch that app, right? And, and, and do that and stay in that innovation and that growth mode. Then, then Uber would have come over here. They would have already been in a really strong mode. Let me give you a case in point. There were some countries where delivery, like delivery, like Uber Eats delivery, has actually struggled to get in and actually had to pull out of the country because it wasn't working. So it's in. It's, it's um, DD does really well in. Uh, it's called uh, DD that does really well in um, China. And they actually had to pull out because they couldn't get the same traction as some of the other apps that were already over there. There was about five or six other apps in China and Hong Kong that were doing food delivery service before Uber got there and, and really, really well. Not like Menulog in Australia. Menulog in Australia was shit. The website was crap. The app was crap. The whole thing was crap, right? So what I'm saying to you is that this, this is about knowing what stage you're in right now. Where are you at right now? Where are you at right now in yourself, right? Where are you at within your business stage right now? Where are you at? And, and do you know that step you're at right now? Does that make sense? Where are you at right now? What, what level are you at right now? Is it idea? Is it launch? Is it sprint? Is it steady? Is it growth? Is it sales? Is it life support? Where are you at right now? That's the critical thing. You've got to know where you're at. And if you're looking to invest, it's important to know 
where you're looking to invest to as well. Does that make sense? So listen, I'd love to know if you've got some questions today, right? We're talking about all the different stages of business. We're talking about what you look for, you're looking to invest and buy into a business. We're talking about uh, what you can look for in your own business. And we're talking about the critical part that you want to get into. And if there's one holy grail I can tell you, you want to get into growth stage and you want to stay there. How do I stay in growth stage? Want to know a secret to my success of building my empire now with now 44 investments? All reinvestment of money and innovation. I reinvest into my businesses in everything I can, in marketing, in training, in uh, better products, better services, and I and I innovate. I innovate. I'm always looking at different ways, better ways that I can do things across the company. And that's my genius. That's where I stay. That's the thing I stay at. That's the most important thing for me is staying in that part of of growth mode. Does that make sense? So, okay, let's do some questions. What have you got? What questions have you got? What questions have you got for me? Hey, let's get a couple of questions out here. What questions have you guys got? Any questions you guys have got today? Let's fire them in. What do you got? What questions you got as we hang out here and we stand together? What, what have you started to work out where you're at? What number, where are you at right now? What stage are you at? Are you at launch stage? Are you at idea stage? Are you at sprint stage, stale stage? Have you gone, oh my gosh, I am at stale stage. I need to get better at this thing. Where are you at right now? What stage are you at? What do you got? Let me know. And then let me know if you have any questions. What well, it could be questions about those stages. It could be questions about how you move through some of those stages. Uh, but every business will find themselves at a certain stage of those business. Every business will find themselves at a certain stage. So if you want to ask questions about that, you can. Or any other questions about, about business uh, or about life that we find ourselves in right now. Because that's the challenge, right? That's the challenge we're in right now. That's why we're standing together. Every one of us is here because we know how much of a challenge this is right now for a lot of people. People and in the in the challenge they're at, you know, we know that businesses has been has been changed. I mean, we've had some people that are growing exponentially because they're having this huge uptake, and we've got some of our econ businesses that are exploding right now. A whole bunch of different businesses are. Other businesses are slowing down because it, it, it because of coronavirus. We know that that's going to affect that. But the reality for you is working out where you are at right now, and. What stage are you at of all those stages I gave you? And what are you going to do to make sure you stay in that, in that beautiful stage, which is the growth stage? Right, what have we got? Questions? Uh, no, Peter, innovation does not have to be totally new. In fact, Peter, one of the things I talk about when it comes to innovation, if you try and innovate things too far, if you try and turn too much from what you were doing before, you end up doing a bit of a 360. So innovation for the sake of innovation <clears throat> isn't great. But innovation should be based upon what your customers are looking for and where you see the future of the industry going. Ergo, we knew that people were going to be using apps. Apps came out 20 years ago. I remember when apps became a big thing. Everyone's like, okay, what should we have apps? What about apps? And that changed the way that we're doing a lot of things. Then you had this kind of innovation on technology that disrupted everything. I mean, how big was that word disruption? I remember doing, I remember doing a video, <laughs> one of like one of these videos on Facebook, you know, 10 years ago or something, 15, on, on disruption, oh, that's the biggest thing, and it's still, it, because it was, and it still is, people are disrupting every industry, it's not hard, they're looking at the industry saying, how can we disrupt it, what can we do differently, look, I showed you this at the start of my video today, <laughs> look at this phone, who remembers this phone, old school, right, now, who hasn't heard that in a long time? I want to do this. Here we go. Ready? Do you remember this? Now, this was a phone. Is a phone, right? Still probably works. But this, right, this receiver. Well, guess what? Does anyone have a family used to walk all around the house and have to be a pullback because of this? Well, it only became, it wasn't too long before somebody said, why do we have to have a cord? Why do we have to have a cord? Why does this have to be here? Why can we not innovate something where you can do the same thing, but you don't have a cord? Then they said, hang on, I've got an idea. <clears throat> Would someone want to buy a phone that you don't have to um, have a cord for? That's a great idea. <clears throat> what about a phone you don't have to ring like this? What about a phone we can press the buttons? Because there was lots of things around at the time that you could press buttons for that wasn't a phone. 
They innovated, not for the sake of innovating, right? They innovated, this is so old school, isn't it? They innovated listening to what people wanted. They wanted buttons. They wanted to have it cordless. They wanted to have it wireless. And guess what? The innovation over the 20, 30 years that, 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 that came after this was all based on that kind of innovation. So think about it. What is a natural innovation for your industry and your product? That's what you should be looking at right now. Next. How do I know whether to start a new business or keep going? Look, it depends on what the business has. I mean, look, I, I have created a lot of successful businesses, but I will tell you this, I've had more false starts than what I have wins. And that's what people forget. They go, oh, Aaron's, he's created a couple of dozen successful businesses. Yeah, I've created a couple of dozen times 10 of failures. I've had ideas that haven't worked out. I've had launches that haven't worked out. I've had partnerships that haven't worked out. I've had lots of things, but I'm not afraid to Give it a go. I'm not afraid to try. So here's what I would say to you. If you believe that there's something in there that can work, you can rechange it. You can rebrand it. Look what Nespresso did. Nespresso was inside Coles and Woolworth supermarkets here in Australia, for those who are watching from Australia, and that they had capsules. They had to pull all the capsules out of Coles, go and build themselves these experience stores, rebrand the entire thing because they had declining profits and they saw that so many other competitors were going to go into Coles and Woolworth to try and sell right next to them. So I said, hang on a second, we can't do this. We are going to get crushed if we go in Coles only because Coles and Woolworths are about selling based on price. No one goes to Woolworths and says, can I get the most expensive thing? It's based on price and it's right next to each other. So they had to rebrand the entire thing. Nespresso didn't didn't, uh, get rid of their pods business. They said, you know what? We're going to rebrand this sucker. We're going to defib it, rebrand it, get it relaunched, get it regoing. And they knew they had a winner. So if you know you have a winner, you've got to say to yourself, what do I need to do to be able to get that back into growth mode and keep it there? Innovations, investments, a whole bunch of stuff. I'm finding if gyms aren't online, they won't survive. I'll tell you that every single client that I have that owns a gym has gone online and is doing online courses, online classes, and they're all surviving. All of my students are all surviving and thriving. In fact, some of them are even making more profit than what they did before uh, before COVID. So if you are a gym, and I've had investments in gyms before, including way back in the day, I even worked in gyms, uh, years and years and years and years and years ago, I actually worked in gyms. So I know the, the, the industry really, really well. If you are not going online, you, you won't survive. I don't think you will. Not right now, anyway. And look, you would have heard of the, um, uh, also looking to people also want to work out from home. Uh, working out from home has become a big thing. You could look at the, the Peloton bike that's, um, that's become uh, just hit here in Australia as well. Some of you heard about the Peloton bike. Uh, and that's, that's an at-home workout that they've, they've created now. It's the whole big craze right now around the world. I've just invested the, the, um, the uh, designer of that has just has, is, is designing um, a whole new system around uh, and a new exercise system around boxing. I've just invested into that as well uh, because it's, it's, and that's, it's all at home boxing. So at home is being a big craze. It doesn't just mean it's not working out the gym. It means that they might want to do some classes at home as well as doing some classes in the gym or work at home as well as working out with the trainer, you know, on, on zoom as well as working out with the trainer live. So there's a whole hybrid mentality that people are getting into when it comes to gyms. What business do you recommend getting to these days? I don't really have, I'm actually one of these funny investors, um, Antonio. I don't really have one one type of, uh, I was actually looking the other day at my portfolio with one of my mentors and I'm across about two dozen industries and I don't have rule of favoritism. I've got brick and mortar, uh, I've got software, software, I've got medical, I've got a whole, like, I've done medical a, a, a fair bit in the last 12 months because of what's been happening around the world, but I don't have one type of, uh, I don't have one type of investment that I get into. Like I've got some friends of mine that only, only, only invest into renewables. That's all they do. I've got friends of mine that only invest in things to do with construction and housing. That's all they do. That's okay. You might find it, but I'm, 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 I, yeah, I'm, I invest in lots of different things. I, I kind of enjoy it. So I don't have one recommendation. You just got to know the margins. What's the industry? Before people start, here's, here's something I'll give you. Before you go into a business, do you know the margin of that industry? So let's say before you go buy a cafe, do you actually know how much the margins are? of cafes, before you go and start a, a building company, a carpentry business, um, a horticulture, you go become a farmer, do you know the margins 
of what those businesses make. People don't do enough understanding and research around the industry. They look at the business and say, I want to start that business or get into it. But what's the margins of the industry, the real margins after cost of good operational expenses, the net gross and the net margins? What are the mar- not margins of the industry? Because sometimes you might get into an industry where really t- challenging margins, the margins are small. Uh, and it takes a huge amount of infrastructure to get involved in those. And you might say, hang on a second, that's not going to be, you know, that's not what I want to do. It's going to take me a hell of a long time to get an ROI. So know the, look at the industry first before you look at the business. Um, Josh, what's your advice on marketing if you were struggling to create your position back in the domestic market of installation? Would you up, un, um, upload a high-level investment to catch high level, high level, high, high initial investment to catch the market really depends on your industry, buddy. Um, oh, look, marketing in general should really be focusing on your bank zone, um, which I, I teach quite a bit in, in, in my courses and our programs. Your bank zone is really the thing that stands out that no one else does, but it's, it's more in depth than that. But that's the, the kind of the, 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 the quickest way I can give it to you. Your marketing should be based upon things that others aren't doing that you can do and to be able to get people in. Depending on, it depends on your cycle. I mean, look, if you're a, if you're a multiple step sales um, organization where you can have a lead magnet, you can have um, some kind of um, funnel that creates a lower end opportunity into a higher end opportunity, okay. But if you're a, a cafe, you have to focus more on engagement and community engagement because you, you, people are going to come in, they're going to buy coffee, they're going to buy food, but you've got to focus more on engagement around your marketing. Uh, you know, you could focus on, hey, come and get a coffee on us, but really it should be more about engagement, about about a sense of belonging, because that's what a cafe gives to people, that sense of belonging. They, they, know a, they know the barista, they know the owner, they see people they've seen that cafe before, they're familiar with the surroundings. So it's a different type of a marketing plan. It depends on what sort of business you're in, would depend on the way you should market, but all marketing should be in alignment with the way that you sell the best. That's a very important factor when you're looking to market in your industry. I'm signing a new lease and hiring this week. Congratulations, laying the foundation the next big phase of growth your teachings. Love it. Growth phase, growth phase. Yeah, love that, love that, love that. Look at you guys kicking some butt, huh? Growth phases, I love that. You guys are legends, hey? Look at that. Well done. Hey, so listen, I hope you've taken a whole bunch from this. We've talked about the stages. We've talked about the idea, launch, sprint. Uh, we've talked about steady. We've talked about growth. We've talked about li- a st- a stale life support, and we've talked about uh, debt, right? So for you, the goal is to invest into the business that you really believe you can affect. Would I buy into a business that's dead? Not unless I'm buying the, 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 the carcass, not unless I'm buying the data and the infrastructure and maybe the IP, you know, maybe that, but, but um, you've got to know what, what business you're buying into. Uh, and if you're in business now, get into growth mode, get into growth stage and stay there. That's the best advice I can give you. All right, we've run over today. Time for me to run. I've got meetings to get to. Much love to every single one of you. Look after yourself. Have an amazing day. Hey, listen, I'll see you tomorrow for another Stand Together. Kick some butt. Go and implement. And remember, if you're going to live a life, you may as well live a life by design and not by default. Keep kicking some ass. Don't forget to share this. Hit that button to share this. Let people know uh, that this is uh, this is where they need to be, hanging out with us live. Plus, of course, I know that, that so many people are watching the replays as well. Look after yourselves and see you guys tomorrow. Bye.